Good morning to all. My name is Dr. J. Virasamy. Um, I am the director of CS Outreach, Computer Science Outreach, and uh, I'm a teaching faculty in Computer Science too. So um, I want to kind of talk about uh, how you can learn programming. You know, you talked a lot about soft, how to be a software engineer and all that. So kind of, kind of digging in a little bit, uh, well, you have to do programming, right? So. This is how we have been doing in a lot of schools, colleges, in US, internationally. A lot of students are introduced directly to C++ Java, OK? So I want to see here how many of you kind of have done C++ Java, started in C++ Java. Several of you, right? So how was it? Initially, just as soon as you jumped in, how was it? How was the experience? It's tough, right? Because syntax errors and all that come in the way, right? So there's logic is one side and there's a syntax errors. So good analogy is uh, learning to ride a bicycle without the training wheels, right? We fall a few times, a few scrapes, you know, we're still determined to do it, we do it. There are people who are not so determined, fall off. They don't say, enough of this, I'm going straight to the car, right? So they may not uh, learn to ride the bike at all. You know, so we see that a lot in uh, young students. Young students are even college students struggle a lot when they take the first programming course directly in C, C++, Java. We do lose students, even computer science and college level, that they simply, you know, feel they, don't, they, they lose confidence and run away, you know, to other buildings. You know, so never come back. So that happens here. That happens in uh, every school. Every, uh, Lot of schools, I won't say every school. Lot of schools, lot of colleges uh, in US and internationally, okay? It's basically a tall climb. Another analogy is you just barely know how to, how to kind of put words together, make sentences, you're asked to write poetry with perfect grammar. That's what it is, you know? So when you write a report, you miss your dot, your English teacher probably will just put you around and if you take a few points. But computer, if you give that type of one to computer, you get zero. So computer is always zero or one, right? You get 100 out of 100 or zero out of 100. If it cannot compile, it cannot run. As simple as that, you know? So of course, when you fix it, you feel so good. But when you, if you cannot fix it, you spend a lot of hours. It can be a very frustrating experience. So this is what we recommend, OK? This is not our invention or anything like that. You know, so we have just seen the best practices out there, and we have tried to incorporate. And this is what we recommend for all the school students. So last year, we ran uh, uh, 13 summer camps for high school students. Year before that, we had just one summer camp for middle school alone. So last year, we added a high school summer camp. This year, we expanded all the way to elementary. We have one special workshop for kindergarten, first grade, second grade in scratch. So this covers them all. So here, so we start in scratch for elementary students. That's what we recommend. For middle school and up, we recommend to start in Alice, then climb up, OK? So you can see, picture says everything. You know, it's really step-by-step -step approach, OK? Why does this make sense? Go to the next page. Here is another view of the same thing. So the level one, the Scratch, Scratch was developed by MIT. Um, I think it's there for 10, 15 years easily, I think. So it has been improved over time. It's web-based. It's free. All these tools are free, by the way. All the tools we use in workshops and uh, camps, everything is fully free, OK? So it's all GUI-based, meaning a lot of drag and drop, no syntax errors, OK? So no syntax error means when you have an idea, you can put it to work. And uh, you can see it in action. Whether it's right or wrong, you'll see it. You know, then you can fix it, OK? So the whole focus is on the logic, no syntax error. It's like kind of uh, riding a, learning to ride a bike with the training wheels, OK? You focus on going forward instead of falling, OK? Um, the <clears throat> middle school. It's a 3D animation using Alice. Alice was developed by Carnegie Mellon. All the top universities, you know, they have put a lot of effort to develop this. You know, it's uh, it's unfortunate to see that we don't make use of it more. Okay, so 
these are very, very interesting tools. You know, so it's very, very enjoyable tools. Um, uh, the students love it. Most of the students, we were very apprehensive initially, little bit apprehensive to introduce Scratch and you know, bringing third grader to campus, run whole day workshop. You know, it's kind of scary feeling. <laughs> Trying to keep track, you know, keep engaged the whole day. No problem. You know, most students we had no problem in engaging and doing it. Those are wonderful tools. You know, so tools are out there. It's a, it has become very enjoyable. Compared to 15 years ago, 20 years ago, learning to program, currently it's so much more enjoyable to learn. Okay, so that's a 2D animation, and this is 3D animation. Then Khan Academy kind of introduced a version of the JavaScript for introduction to computer science. I think I would say two to three years ago they introduced. Okay, so you have one side window to code and other side the output. So it's a free form coding. So if somebody likes animation games, they love the Scratch and uh, Alice. And here also you can do gaming um, and the drawings, a lot of drawings. So it's, if you, let's say you have a very artistic side, that's a wonderful tool. So bring the artistic side out and also you learn programming along the way, okay? So it's a free form coding because at some point you have to do the free form coding. Why? All these are free form coding, meaning you type in everything, right? You can get used to that, right? So free form coding also means that syntax errors, right? As soon as you start typing a lot, you will make syntax errors, right? You come out, you may miss, semicolon, you may miss, and all those things. So, but there's a friendly environment. As soon as you make a mistake, it comes says where the, exactly the mistake is, okay? Even these tools gotten better over time. C, C plus Java, they have gotten very much better. Now the compiler does show where the error is. Lots of time in the past, you might have had experience. Error may be here, compiler will say somewhere here, <laughs> or here. <laughs> You're scratching your head, what's wrong with this? There's nothing wrong here, you know? So. Remember, it's a computer. It's, it doesn't have the brain of yours. You know, it's a. Um, we can think uh, still better. We, we in lot of respects, we are we act much better than very powerful computers. Still, okay. So, back to this. So we learn the freeform coding. Then we find it a lot easier to handle C, C, plus plus Java. Our workshops and camps we run. We have a lot of fifth graders very comfortably sitting in Java and coding, okay? So at least partially I attribute that success to this stepping, step up mechanism, multi-step approach, okay? They have climbed the steps and when they reach here, they are very comfortable because they, they went through all this process, okay? So we run almost all the school breaks this Monday President's Day, we ran workshops, one-day workshops. And before that, MLK Day, we had a, a National Day of Service. We provided free workshops on that day to all the students. Around 250 students came. President's Day, 100 students. We had the winter break workshops. And the summer, summer this year, we're going to run 77 camps. And it's counting up, OK? so. That includes uh, middle school camps and uh, elementary camps. Elementary level, we are going to keep a morning's camp and afternoon camps. All the camps are one week, pretty much. And uh, the elementary level alone is a morning's camp and afternoon camp. And middle and uh, high school, full day camps, full day, uh, whole week camps. So after doing learning C, C++, Java, you know, um, where do you go from there? <coughs> well. There are two major ways you can do beyond that. Let's say you like that thinking process, you, you like problem solving. Contest is a great way to do. We had last Saturday, we had 300 students on campus to do high school programming contest. Okay, Few from Austin, few from Houston as well. Okay, In the end of May, we may do state level, most likely we'll do state level programming contest right here in UT Dallas. Okay, so. Best teams from the state bring here and do it. These problems are very hard problems. The contest, uh, the problems which we solve, the high school students, best students solve. If I take that uh, and give it to our uh, computer science students, UTD computer students, computer science students, 90% of them will fail to solve them in time. Okay, so so they are very tough problems. Just like training, you know, as an athlete, you know, you do a lot of training or music, you do a lot of the same way. It's a mental training, really, okay? 
and uh, it's a very amazing experience you know just to see them working you know that 3 hours contest you know it's a lot of uh, uh, lot of enthusiasm you know lot of energy in the air you know so other it's not for everybody you know everybody need not like that algorithmic thinking lot of uh, thinking oriented problem solving oriented ones instead you can focus on apps and games applications and games if you have game you like game you know everybody plays games nowadays in smartphones you can build a game okay so that's what your passion is you can certainly do that too even to reach there you need to have the fundamental programming skills okay so so hopefully this gives a, a kind of good good picture for what to do our website is very easy to remember utd.edu/k12 cannot be simpler okay utd that edu slash k12 if you come to ecss building engineering south building there's a flyer for all the spring break workshops summer camps there's a flyer there you can pick one from there okay so i think that's all the slides so i'll be very happy to answer your questions so just like uh, rata to you there uh, that uh, anybody can cook really anybody can program particularly with the type of tools we have these are extremely powerful tool scratch i was blown away by the power of that tool you know even the elementary kids can get on as a professor i learned because i had to teach i learned i was i found it amazing how much it can do parallel processing can do it can do event triggered just like gaming extremely powerful tool and it's free this is free as well so this is a very fancy 3d animations it can do uh, and you can even develop something here you can bring it to java and do more enhancements all kind of cool stuff we can do going forward we have done lot of these things going forward few things we are working on is introduction to programming using music there are lot of people who are very excited about music and uh, they practice music we want them to bring it bring in too so Uh, music has lot of repetitions and uh, changes and all that so its programming can uh, incorporate that so we can uh, synthesize a music you know using a program you know that's something we are working on next one is minecraft minecraft mods okay most likely you will run your workshop how to create minecraft mods okay in spring break i am working on that hopefully you will make it happen you know it's coming just a matter of when okay so back to questions yes so you said at the uh, utd.edu/k12 we can find many of these free all this information is there yes yeah uh, and our workshop schedule summer camp schedule everything is there yes she's taken a couple of the classes here but just the the, the half day so when i'm looking at summer camps for her should i look at the things she's already taken Yes. No, the half a day once one day once are so short we just give you introduction. I strongly encourage you to take one week camp, you know. So I don't want anybody to rush through. There's no point in rushing through at all. We really want to kind of slow down and you know, enjoy the journey. Journey is more important than uh, destination really. Yes. How old do you have to be to take the Minecraft mods? I know that was coming. uh my minecraft mods um, middle school kids can take it but but we do not restrict anybody else from taking we have seen java for example java generally we say high school but lot of elementary students are there you know so younger ones can come to you know just that to do the more complicated mods actually you need java knowledge to do the very advanced ones you can get started everybody is welcome our camps and workshop we do not restrict anybody okay lot of things lot of things we say is recommended basically you know so lot of times students want to try something particular one day workshops it's not a big deal you know afternoon it may become very complicated you kind of catch on as much as you can okay so it's open uh, what do you think would be the best java ide eclipse or net beans <sighs> good question eclipse or i Uh, net beans uh, for different purposes different one the eclipse for example android development eclipse kind of fits better better integration uh, whereas alice actually alice they have built the java integration that uses the net beans so really 
there's no very clear cut answer. You know, a lot of functionalities are very similar. For example, programming contest, they're like Eclipse because Eclipse allows uh, the package without the package or a NetBeans requires a package. So you know, it depends on your usage. Uh, can you tell me, 